I'm Kim, and I am currently in a reading slump. This particular reading slump is the effect of the anticipation of two particular books that have yet to be released. They're coming soon, and I want them now. And because I can't have them, my brain is going, well, you can't read the books that you want to read, so you can't read any books at all. So the books that I'm incredibly excited for, but are not here yet, and I'm mad about that, are Thick as Thieves by Meg Whalen Turner, which comes out on May 16th, and A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Moss, which comes out on May 2nd. Today is April 20th, and I need a time machine. My kingdom for a time machine! It's Ren Fair time, in case you, you haven't noticed. Everyone is talking about A Court of Wings and Ruin, but no one is talking about Thick as Thieves. And I need to remedy that. Because Megan Whalen Turner. Thick as Thieves is the fifth book in the Queen's Thief series, and... Where did they end up? It was behind the archivist one. The archivist. I'm, I'm the archivist. People in the world don't know about end times. I, I did a web series, and end times is fabulous. It's produced by Mad Manatee Productions, and it was really fun. So, Thick as Thieves is the fifth book in the Queen's Thief series. Shh! Thick as Thieves is the fifth book in the Queen's Thief series by Megan Whalen Turner. And it has been nine years since the fourth book came out. Now I have to look it up. Only seven years. It came out in 2010. My friend Alex has been in the fandom pretty much since its inception, as I understand it. Um, she bas she got in on the ground floor, and she didn't recommend these books to me until a year or two ago, and I just immediately fell in love. I don't know how she did it. Like she's got the elevator pitch for this for this particular series down, and my elevator pitch for this series is Jen's a little shit, and he probably deserves everything that's coming to him. But that really doesn't make you interested in the story, it just seems vindictive. The Thief is definitely an adventure, but you will never see that plot twist coming. The comparison to BBC's Sherlock is quite apt. Um, people don't believe me because these are technically children's books. They're written in such a way that the ideas grow on top of each other, and it leaves you with a story that you can peel apart like an onion. And I'm pretty sure that Megan Whelan Turner's writing process involves, so she, like, she writes the whole book and then she goes back and takes out the linchpin scene, like that scene that would have been like, oh, I understand what is happening as things are happening. And she just takes that out and then she, she sits back and watches you squirm. It's sadistic. And I love it. <laughs> the Queen of Tolia takes a more sinister tone. It's also the one where the politics become forefront on the the development of the plot and that's where I throw all of my worldly goods in. I throw my cap over the wall I am in. As soon as politics get involved I'm like I will die for this book. I don't know why there's like there's like three four things that a book has to have in order for me to just love it and that would be uh, psychology, philosophy, politics, and really smart main characters. I don't know why, but any combination of those four things and I'm just so in. King of Atolia is the third book. Again, you don't have to read them in order, but I recommend you do. King of Atolia is all about the long con. Like, you've spent two books with these characters, you know them pretty well, and then all of a sudden everything is different and it seems so real that you as the reader start to forget and second guess and maybe and then you get hit with with the with the plot twist cuz Megan Llewellyn Turner is amazing and awful and conspiracy of kings 
Conspiracy of Kings is a coming-of-age story with a heaping spoonful of politics. Um, it's also told in a very different way. It's, it's a first-hand recounting with several third-person narrative, uh, like, step out of the story, talk about how you're talking about the story, and then back in the story. And it's, it's very interesting, but I found it captivating. And now Thick as Thieves is looming on the horizon, and I can't help but wonder what kind of curveballs Megan Whaley Turner is going to throw at us in this one. I'm also highly anticipating A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Maas. It's the third one in the Court of Rose and Thorns series, and <sighs> Mist and Fury left off at this beautiful, gruesome, like heart-rending cliffhanger, and it's like, I have to know! <laughs> And I don't get to know for another two weeks. So my reading slump is mildly assuaged by the Howl's Moving Castle audiobook, which um, I'm listening to in preparation for a video with my friend Chrissy of Fandom Fondue. She just read the book and we both watched the movie together and I'm rereading the book so that we can, um, we can like have a, a full and, and academic discussion about, about it, which will probably have quite a lot of flailing involved. So maybe not quite academic per se. But that is in the works and it is one of the only books in my currently reading pile that I'm actually making progress on. I am supposed to be reading Graceling and A Darker Shade of Magic and Name of the Wind and Ready Player One. I think it's just those four that I started and then never finished. Oh, Lady Midnight is also on the started but haven't finished. Um, I read and finished uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but I have yet to start the sequels, and in fact I lost my library copy of the second one. So I should probably find that at some point. Um, that's concerning. But aside from that, hopefully Howl's Moving Castle will, will keep me sane until mid-May because apparently I just I'm, I'm not capable of picking up a book right now. Thank you Megan Whelan Turner! Aviento!